they say the fastest compost required machines, tumblers, bins, temperature probes. But one overlooked material hiding in every home outperformed them all. Not a gadget, not a chemical, just cardboard, soaked, stacked, and alive. Gardeners who tried it saw harvest up to 40% faster, richer soil, and worm counts that exploded sixfold. And the secret? It isn't in what cardboard adds, it's in what it holds. This humble, recycled sheet does something even advanced compost systems can't. Layered like lasagna, greens, browns, water, and air, it builds a living sponge that feeds itself. No bins, no turning, no expensive tools. Just a small patch of ground, a few old boxes, and a method so simple it feels like cheating. Today, on Stellar Eureka, we're uncovering how soaked cardboard can outperform high-tech composters, transforming kitchen scraps into rich soil in record time and changing how gardens grow forever. In a quiet corner of the city, a group of volunteers decided to test whether this strange, low-tech method could really reshape how food was grown. Twelve raised beds stood side by side, each four by eight feet. Six were built the old-fashioned way, rich compost from tumblers, carefully turned and measured. The other six followed the cardboard lasagna method exactly as described. Soaked boxes, kitchen scraps, alternating greens and browns, layered to 18 inches. Sunlight, watering, and soil were kept identical. No extra fertilizer, no hidden advantage. By mid-season, the difference was impossible to ignore. Tomatoes in the cardboard beds reached higher, fruited earlier, and produced an average of 22 pounds per bed compared to 15 and a half from the compost tumblers. Bush beans yielded 10.2 pounds versus 7.1, and lettuce heads? 45 against 32. Each harvest was weighed, logged, and verified by the garden lead and her volunteers. Numbers can measure yield, but what happened beneath the surface told a deeper truth. A hidden system more alive than any compost bin could ever recreate. Organic matter in the cardboard beds jumped from 2% to 32 nearly double the gain of the control beds. Water infiltration rates more than tripled. Earthworm counts soared from three per shovel at the start of the season to 18 by the end. One volunteer described finding a dozen worms in a single handful of soil, something she'd never seen in two decades of gardening. The lead researcher called it the most dramatic improvement in soil health I've ever recorded. What cardboard seemed to offer wasn't just compost, it was life amplified. To understand why soaked cardboard performs so well, we have to go underground, where the real transformation begins. Shannon Router, a master gardener and small farms coordinator at Oregon State University Extension, explains that when layered correctly, corrugated cardboard acts like a living sponge beneath the surface. Those tiny ridges between its sheets, the same ones that give boxes their strength, trap both air and water, the two things that soil life needs most. Microbes, fungi, and earthworms thrive in this microclimate. The damp cardboard keeps the compost from drying out, while the air pockets prevent it from turning sour. This balance of moisture and oxygen creates an environment where decomposition speeds up exponentially. As kitchen scraps and grass clippings above begin to break down, the cardboard below holds steady humidity, feeding billions of bacteria that chew through organic matter at a remarkable rate. The process releases nutrients almost immediately, a shortcut nature rarely offers. Meanwhile, earthworms, drawn by the constant dampness, begin burrowing through the layers, mixing materials and aerating the bed. Their tunnels expand the cardboard's network of pores, and their castings enrich the soil with nitrogen and beneficial microbes. Router describes the effect simply. Cardboard acts like a mattress for soil life. It holds water and oxygen, so worms and beneficial microbes stay where they're needed most and multiply like crazy. 
Extension trials confirmed it. Cardboard not only accelerates decomposition, but suppresses weeds and eliminates odor even in midsummer heat. The result is a soft, breathable compost bed that becomes its own ecosystem, one that produces harvest up to 40% faster than traditional bins without any turning, machinery, or cost. Sometimes the biggest breakthroughs don't start in laboratories, they begin behind apartment buildings. After years of wrestling with a heavy, rusting compost tumbler that promised perfect compost but mostly delivered frustration, I decided to try something different. That tumbler had cost me nearly $400, not counting the hours spent turning and unclogging it every few days. The results were fine, but never impressive, about 14 pounds of tomatoes from a 4 by 8 foot bed at season's end. Last spring, I skipped the bin entirely. I gathered six discarded shipping boxes from a recycling pile, soaked them thoroughly, and layered them with kitchen scraps and grass clippings, nothing fancy, just cardboard and leftovers. By mid-August, the garden told its own story. The tomato plants grew taller, fruited earlier, and by harvest time the scale read 20 pounds, a 43% increase over my best season. The soil turned dark and alive, threaded with earthworms, weaving through freshly made tunnels. The total cost? About $5 for a bag of grass clippings from the neighbor's yard. What struck me most wasn't the yield, but the silence. No turning, no smell, no equipment to fight with, just quiet abundance built from waste. I began to wonder if this wasn't just a gardening trick, but a glimpse of how nature repairs itself when we stop trying to control it. This experiment proves something I'd long suspected. Sometimes the most effective technologies aren't invented, they are rediscovered. Have you tried composting with cardboard yet? Tell me in the comments, I'd love to know what you've seen so far. And keep watching, the results ahead might surprise you. After seeing those results, the cost gap became impossible to ignore. A new compost tumbler or smart bin can cost anywhere from $250 to $600, not counting maintenance or repairs. The cardboard method, built from what most people throw away, cost almost nothing. For renters, students, or anyone short on space, it's a revelation. No machines, no power source, and no permanent structure. All you need are a few boxes, a hose, and scraps you already have. In a world where home gardening can feel like an expensive hobby, this method restores what composting was always meant to be. Simple, accessible and regenerative. The savings are immediate, but the real reward lies underground. Each layer of soaked cardboard and kitchen waste becomes a habitat for worms and microbes, building a living soil that keeps giving season after season. The cardboard bed doesn't just save money, it creates independence. A garden that pays for itself in food, in knowledge, and in freedom from overcomplicated tools. But independence still demands awareness, because not all cardboard is created equal. Not every box is fit for the garden. The same material that can transform soil can also harm it, depending on what it's made of. For composting beds, use only plain brown corrugated shipping boxes, never glossy, waxed, or heavily printed cardboard. Those shiny coatings and bright colors often contain PFAS, heavy metals, and synthetic dyes that linger in soil long after the paper breaks down. Some can even be absorbed by root crops. Before layering, strip every box clean, remove tape, labels, and staples. Even the smallest bits of plastic can slow decomposition and leach unwanted chemicals into your bed. Think of it as editing your ingredients. The cleaner the input, the purer the soil that follows. If the bed ever starts to smell sour, don't panic. Add a dry layer, cardboard, straw, or leaves, and poke a few air holes with a garden fork. That simple step restores airflow and stops anaerobic bacteria from taking over. Should decomposition stall, sprinkle in a handful of garden soil or a few extra kitchen scraps to boost microbial activity. 
Within weeks, the balance resets itself, proof that nature always knows how to recover as long as we give it the right materials. Even the best systems need fine-tuning. If your cardboard bed ever smells sour or rotten, it isn't failing, it's simply asking for balance. Add more dry browns, like leaves or shredded cardboard, and open a few air channels with a garden fork. Spread them until the surface rustles again, the sound of air returning to the pile. Oxygen is the cure. Within days, the smell fades and decomposition returns to normal. If you notice soggy patches, sprinkle on more dry material and water gently only when the surface feels dry. If decomposition stalls, when scraps remain visible after a few months, a handful of garden soil or fresh kitchen waste jumpstarts the microbes again. Most climates see full breakdown within four to six months. When the top layer looks dark, crumbly, and rich, your compost bed is ready for planting. Now, treat it like an experiment. Record how long it takes from seed to harvest, count how many seeds germinate and how many survive, track the hours you spend building and maintaining the bed from soaking cardboard to the final watering. These numbers matter. They're how gardeners everywhere turn simple observation into data that reshapes what we know about soil. By sharing your results with community gardens, schools, or online groups, you join a growing network of citizen scientists, proving how small-scale methods can make big environmental impact. Each bed becomes a micro-lab and every gardener a researcher. After months of quiet work underground, it was finally time to see what all that invisible life had built. After a single season, the results spoke for themselves. Cardboard lasagna beds produced harvest up to 40% faster, with 22 pounds of tomatoes per bed compared to 15.5 from traditional compost. Soil organic matter rose from 2 to 3.2%, while earthworm counts jumped sixfold from 3 per shovel at planting to 18 by the final harvest. The data, verified through side-by-side -side community trials, confirmed what the eye already saw. Richer soil, faster growth, and cleaner composting. Each box, once destined for landfill, became a building block for new life. Even the soil scientists were astonished. The process turned discarded packaging into a living system that filtered water, stored carbon, and multiplied microbial life. It was composting stripped to its essence, efficiency born from simplicity. Of course, questions remain. Future studies are still exploring trace contaminants like PFAS and heavy metals in colored or waxed boxes. But when done properly, using only plain corrugated cardboard in two to three inch layers, the method remains one of the safest and most sustainable forms of home composting ever tested. The evidence is clear. With nothing more than soaked cardboard and kitchen waste, gardeners can outpace expensive machines, rejuvenate dead soil, and recycle their own waste stream into food. It's a reminder that innovation doesn't always mean invention. Sometimes it means rediscovery. Simple, accessible materials, cardboard, scraps, and soil are outperforming high-tech compost systems and reshaping how food is grown. What remains to be seen is not whether it works, but how many of us will choose to use it. If you've tried this method yourself, share your results in the comments. Your experience could inspire the next gardener to start. And if you found this video helpful, share it with someone who thinks composting has to be complicated. This is Stella Eureka, signing off.